Um, for item one, acceptance of minutes from 923. I did print them off on the back of the agenda. So if, yeah. you, if anybody hasn't seen them, they're on the back of the agenda. So. I move we accept the minutes as presented. Second. I'll second. In favor? In well, I think we, since Sarah's removed, we'll have to call the roll. Oh, so, okay. So, and I don't have it alphabetical, so I'll just go around the room. Sarah, do you accept the minutes? Yes. <laughs> Dr. Bougie? Uh, yes. Steve? Yes. yes. Dawn? Lori? Yes. Chris? Yes. <laughs> So those pass. Yeah. All right. Okay. Is it six voting members? Um, five. Made by Lori, seconded by Chris. Six voting members. One, two, five. three, four, five, six. 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 Yes. Yeah. I'm just pretending I'm Linda. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm a member. Very good job. <laughs> Does everybody know Libby? She's our, yes. our yes. Uh, yeah. minute, minute girl. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Checking to see if he has signed in yet. The really? other I don't see him up no. there yet. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Well, it's okay. We can uh, move on. You can just come in when he's yeah. when he's ready. Um, item three is uh, plans discussion with Paul Designs Project PLLC and Shark Architecture. Here we are. Uh, here, here we are. Starting up. Starting. Yes, indeed. Um, so I have uh, some questions as we start, and also. Uh, thought it would be good to, since we're moving very quickly, to, to uh, start hearing a little bit from all of you about. We talked a lot about what the building might be used for mm -hmm. um, at the interview, but I haven't really heard from you um, any thoughts that you had individually. I know we have some ideas, obviously, but right. I thought that would be a good uh, discussion. Uh, I guess I should ask how much time. I don't want to monopolize everything, but. No, well, this is this is the topic for the evening. Okay. We generally go about an hour. Okay, great. So, and we don't we can we can do this. Uh, I'm looking to gather a lot of information so that we can do some work and really come back to you absolutely. to have a, a more mm -hmm. robust conversation mm -hmm. since we're just absolutely. starting. And we've been looking at the information that you had shared as part of the RFP, and we've sort of you know, we've put together a model of a building and we've sort of reverse engineered a program out of that. Um, so that's just like the beginning of things, but we, these are living documents that we will modify as we move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of what we've done so far. And, uh, and the, let me go through my questions. <laughs> go that way. Mm -hmm. So Linda mentioned that the fire chief was looking to do a controlled burn in the building. Do any of you are any of you aware? Yes, we talked about it. She talked to me about it. I'm a select. I'm the select board member. Okay. On the committee. Great. So um, we talked about them wanting to do a control burn, I believe, you know, in this section yeah. okay. over here. So whether or not that affects you, your opinion on that, I, was what, I mean, we're not dedicated to it. So I, I think it's okay. Obviously, I'd love to talk to the, the fire chief about yeah. it just to see what they're planning. And, yeah. and, you know, we're just concerned with smoke, obviously, yeah. seeping into the wood of the building and all that. Yeah. But mm -hmm. uh, I think it was in November, though. That was the biggest thing was the schedule. Yeah. Because we are trying to put the, one of the first items I believe that we'll have to do is put together the RFP or with you to get the demolition mm -hmm. of the yeah. building going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a big item. You yeah. want to know what that costs because obviously that comes off of the budget. Mm -hmm. um, so we could probably start doing that now. And if I don't think we would have anyone on board until uh, after that. So yeah. I, I, yeah. I mean, I have no reason to say no, the fire marshal can't do yeah. that, but I, yeah. uh, I one, just want to make sure we've got it on our schedule. Yeah. And one question we had in relation to that is there's still a lot of furniture mm -hmm. and things in the building. So um, she she sent out an email today about the the kitchen equipment. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's a lot of school stuff and desks. So she, one of the things Linda was wondering is whether or not you had uh, connections or suggestions on how we could deaccess. Yeah, yeah, because most demo companies don't want to deal with that sort of thing, and there are some things that people would find of use. You know, between mm -hmm. desks and file cabinets and 
Steve and I have our <laughs> a couple of things. That, well, I was going to say that might be the first thing. And yeah. things like that. We used to almost so. have a garage sale. Yeah. Uh, and see if there's any salvage companies that might be interested in things. Exactly. Um, we could do. What we'd like to do is is come up and do some measuring and survey work mm -hmm. of the building. Mm -hmm. So what we could do at the same time is probably do a. a I won't say a precise inventory, but a yeah. general inventory yeah, of what's right. in the building. Mm -hmm. That way we could at least, I've seen some of it in the walkthrough. Yeah. It's been yeah. a while, but I you know, can sort of say, oh yeah, that might have salvage to this company that does something yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And like the gym floor is maple and you know, there's beams that are from right. the fifties that make that. Uh, well, there may be some yeah. of those materials that we want to. Exactly, absolutely, absolutely. exactly. Um, I mean, so. sometimes. Re reusing materials like that can cost more than buying new, right. but it might be no, maybe I, not at this point. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> it's, it's always so it, bad. The, yeah. the least we can do is look at things and make some decisions yeah, to start. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so I'm going to put um, on our agenda for that walkthrough. So I'm going to turn off my beeper here. That's pretty annoying. <laughs> Comment. Yes. Uh, but, uh, what about seeing if the that school? Uh, Academy. Beckett, whether they we want anything, we want could, anything. That's yeah, that's yes, whether or not they have. want anything specific, we could check with Beckett. So Beckett is who bought the the patrol school down the street. So. That's a good thought, really. Yeah. That's yeah. very good. Like DEF, especially. Right. Mm -hmm. called Main School Solutions. They have a real life sign out there. Okay. Right. I, think, I think there's also a few. Um, there's an association of of private not-for-profit schools mm -hmm. that we might be able to contact. Probably, I don't know if we could do it with state school district. I don't know if they would be as amenable to recycling, but I know there's a lot of sort of independent schools that are always looking for furniture and things like that, mm -hmm. which maybe there's a posting board. We could we could yeah. look that up as well. Because there's a um, double oven, the warming oven in there, but it's on three-phase power. And right. Caprera looked at it and they because it's three phase so there might be somebody out there that's got that right. ready and could find value in that there's so. a restaurant supply here in new hampshire and in portland and they do a lot of sort of recycling yeah. and so reselling sure. exactly. of yeah. kitchen equipment yeah um, and that's who we reached out to you know here yeah. in winter yeah. but they that particular piece they made an offer on some other stuff but that particular okay. piece is kind of and something that somebody might definitely want. right right so at the walkthrough then we will uh, we'll assess the furniture we will um, we'll measure as we've said uh, um, and then we will also look at materials that we would consider for recycling and then we can sort of report back mm -hmm. to you what we're finding do you have a there. time schedule for that we would like to do it very soon mm -hmm. um we possibly uh thursday or friday of this week um my mom's calling. <laughs> hey, mom's I called in on the way up to check in. Apologies. Yeah, we we were thinking. I don't know if if there's a, a more or less convenient time for all of you for us to get into the building. Um, that I I'd have you reach out to Linda okay. because she'd be the one okay. that would let you in. And she's very concerned about the mold in there, and she talked about fifteen minute exposure. Oh, I know, but you so know, I, you know, yeah. Well, I think we we need to do some exterior measuring yeah. as well, yeah. so that we can do, and then for yeah. we can wear masks obviously right. and then for inside we can walk through and probably just take photos and then yeah, we can that would probably, uh, yeah. at least have information yeah um yeah because i think that, well we would we bring a, a group of people here i know the uh, electrical engineer wants to yeah. i spoke yeah. with he wants to come up just to look at where the service is i know there was discussion about this building having some utilities connected yes i think might be just water but water. i don't know about electric water and sewer, sewer. Water and sewer water. Sewer. so we want it so i need to get the mechanical engineer as well because i want to we want to understand what kind of site utilities we need yeah. to do first yeah mm -hmm. uh because again that's another cost yeah. item and yeah and we the more we can figure out the earlier the better would be yeah um so i will check i will check with linda and then we'll try to see if we can do that thursday or friday this week or if not next week um how often as I'm jumping around here, apologies. How often do you meet? 
It depends on the need, I okay. would say. Mm -hmm. You know, we can yeah. every couple of weeks or we um, have okay. been. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, while we're going through the selection yeah. process, yeah. we're yeah. meeting fairly regular, you know. Right. So I would imagine once we get in within a few weeks from even even if it was two weeks, we would probably have some information to share and we would have mm -hmm. the beginning of some drawings. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to talk a little bit about program tonight, just a little bit, and then mm -hmm. we could have a more robust conversation about that mm -hmm. next time. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I'll reach out to Linda and we'll schedule that, try to get it as soon as possible. Uh, let's see. Schedule wise for the entire project, the schedule that was in the RFP, I assume is the schedule. More or less. More or less. More or less. Okay. I, you know, I don't think it's cast in stone. No. I guess but, a framework. Okay. Are there any crucial deadlines? Things need to be done by certain dates for any funding purposes or anything of that nature? No, not that I'm aware of. Okay. We can confirm that, but I don't believe okay. that that's the case because nothing, they've already moved. Ever. Yeah, that's they've already moved to get that. Uh, that's that's okay. taken care of already. Okay. I, I know that the larger picture. There just were some milestones in there that I think we were like by the end of this month we were trying to have, be complete with schematic. Or concept design, which is probably a little aggressive. Yeah, yeah. I would think we could make up the time in the middle of the project, mm -hmm. not at the beginning, because right. I want to right. make sure we yeah. have some time to really Maybe. think. The design is the most important part, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and what uh, the trades have to work with. And right. So there, we're going to do a lot of things simultaneously here because mm -hmm. it, it is a quick moving project. Mm -hmm. um, what did Linda say about the bank, though? We have to start withdrawing the money at some point. The one point. We have a ninety day draw on it so if there's any immediate need we can do a 90-day draw we're going to do a geotech we're going to do survey there'll be some early upfront work yeah, okay. that could be built and right voice yeah. to yeah. Yeah. Time. Yeah. 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 um Start the and and just as another side the budget obviously is something that we would track together because we've got your soft costs and your hard costs right given that it's an overall fixed budget i think mm -hmm. it might you know as transparent as you can be, obviously, we don't need to know things that we don't need to know, right. but just to look at how we manage things, because it's going to be a little flexible. Um, for example, we talked about the construction delivery method at the interview, whether right. it was going to be construction manager right. or mm -hmm. bid. Well, we have money in the proposal for estimating. If you had a construction manager, we would want to shift that to the construction oh, yeah. management right. because mm -hmm. they would be doing the estimating. Mm -hmm. right. um, so those kind of things are, so I, I, I guess I'm, the question I'm asking here is, I'm assuming a little fluidity in this is okay as we sort of pin things down. From what I understand, what, you know, <clears throat> we want it done right. Yeah. I think we don't have any, any like we don't have an occupant that's trying to move in at right. a particular time or whatnot. You know, we certainly don't want it to drag out. R but, correct. But, right. you know, I don't think yeah. if we're doing a good job, and identifying things that need, be, need to be taken care of. I think everybody would be pretty pleased. If, well, we're, so. if we're demonstrating progress. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and yeah. obviously, the, you know, the longer a project drag, drags out, the, yeah. the more it ends up costing usually. Absolutely. Correct. Yeah. And, and the schedule, I, I, you know, we've seen the schedule and we know what's there. So I think we're okay with that. Yeah. It's just a couple of these milestones in the middle. And that's really the conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that coupled with the budget and sort of making sure that we're tracking that. So I think mm -hmm. that'll be another probably touch point at each of our meetings just right. to start to oh. look at that. Yeah. Um, we'll get more information as we move forward. At the beginning, it's going to be how much is the geotech work? Right. How much is the right. demolition right. eventually we're gonna uh -huh. get that. So, okay. okay, so that's good. Um, then I'm gonna switch just to demolition since I just mentioned it. So I'm assuming for that process, you would put out an RFP that we would prepare documents for. Um, as a process? I would imagine that that's what we would want to do. Um, and if I can also I run, to Linda about, I can talk to know. Linda about this directly as well. Yeah, um, yeah well, it makes no, sense no that we would that. want to. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what I imagine we would do for that is produce documents. We mm -hmm. want to look at, uh, we have a lot of information that you've already done, but we mm -hmm. want to identify the areas that we're, we're demolishing and uh, mm -hmm. obviously any yeah. We have to get furniture out. There's disclaimers. What kind of uh, care should someone take when they're near the building we're saving? And all of those mm -hmm. things. Any of the utilities on the site that we want to separate. Mm -hmm. So we'll we'll put together documents for that purpose. 
and John. John was going to try to join us. Yeah, I was checking. <laughs> he just he texted me that he was having problems with Zoom, but oh, it's okay. Yeah. I, I can also follow up with him. It's not mm -hmm. going to be an issue. Right. Um, so, uh, do you imagine the demolition contractor would be discouraged about having that practice burn? I don't think so. Um, I mean, they're was, used to demoing buildings that have burned. Right. Right. But I was just. That's why I wanted to speak with the fire chief about it, uh, because I just wanted to understand what he expects will be left after they're done. Yeah, to, to what extent? Yeah, to because it, because if it demolishes a significant part of the building, then we've saved some money. <laughs> well, yeah, conceivably, if it all burns off to nothing, we don't have to pay tipping fees. Like to, that? No. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, I, so uh, what is the fire chief's name? Dan Roy. Dan Roy. Yeah. Now, he's not going to just burn hay in there and then have smoke and then have the firemen practice going into a building with smoke. I'm, yeah, there there's a lot of scenarios. I know that when they did the controlled burn on Main Street where Buffy, you know, and mm -hmm. Burgess built their right. building, there was, you know, bales of hay that they had, yeah. you know, smoking and did a lot of different yeah. exercises before mm -hmm. it actually burned. Yeah. You know, right. So. Uh, it's an opportunity for them. I just it's, it's good training. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. It's Especially just Especially in a building this size mm -hmm. and the scenario of this building, it's not just a house. It has, you know, right. like an industrial almost, you know. Correct. It gives a lot of search and rescue yes, opportunities. Exactly. Yeah. Would you like those. Dan's number? Oh, if you have it, that'd be I great. Thank it's you. 207 446 7030. Great. I will give Dan a call and we can just talk more about it. <laughs> And, and I can find out more about this. I, well. I know well, Linda. You know, everybody is no, I have. I'm using his building for control Taylor this year. Yes, that's right. That's right. I forgot. Okay. Then uh, let's see. The next item I have here is in terms of preferred vendors that you might use for things like security or for any low voltage. This was coming from the electrician as well. Mm -hmm. I assume you have preferred vendors for for buildings that you're. We defer that too. Um, I yeah, think we'd have to chat with, okay. with Linda to see okay. if there's somebody, but I don't know that we have any preferred vendors, really. Um, there's probably systems even, or maybe right. it's just manufacturers of systems that yeah. uses mm -hmm. a simplex system, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly. Kind of more than okay. yeah. But if Linda's the keeper of that info, I can mm -hmm. ask her that question for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, let's see. What else do I have? And then the last thing I had here was black shit. So, uh, yeah, I thought it was a simplex <laughs> system, but um, we just want to make sure it's coordinated with whatever systems that you're yeah. using and that whoever's yeah. maintaining it is maintaining all the systems. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so the last item I had here really before talking program was really about the, the construction delivery method and construction management and what you're all thinking about the direction for that. I think we're looking for like your input. Mm -hmm. What do you have? a preference that, you, you know, in how you would like to deal with it? I think a construction manager would be a better scenario for this project than doing a traditional Why? bid. As a subcontractor, yep. you know, because I've worked under both, so. So what I, because there are, because it's a renovation, a demolition mm -hmm. and preservation mm -hmm. and all of these things that we've talked about. Right. Um, there are more than likely some unknown conditions Very that we're going to pop up. Definitely. So if this was bid, then whoever has bid it, when they when there's an unknown, and I'm not going to suggest that the people who would bid would be unscrupulous, but, no, but it's an opportunity to you're raise some money. Their, and you're going to cover a few IA. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Whereas a construction manager, which could still be procured mm -hmm. through a competitive process, mm -hmm. so I think that would meet requirements that the town mm -hmm. has, would would be more would be more of a partner in this process mm -hmm. uh, in terms of, of uh, some uh, constructability, buildability issues, estimating for certain, um, mm -hmm. because they'll have an even better grasp on market prices than mm -hmm. I mean, we, we have a grasp on market prices, but as you all know, they've been a little bit all over the place lately. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and it's interesting when, you know, I, some of the construction managers that we're working with now will, will basically track things weekly in terms of like where lumber prices are and where's plywood and where's, yeah. mm -hmm. right now we can't get um, those zip panels, the green boards, mm -hmm. um, they're like, zip panels are, they're out yeah. forever. Yeah. So, uh, so they're like pre-ordering things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I would suggest that a 
that, and I would say that was probably one of the first items to, would be to get someone on board mm -hmm. uh, to put an RFP together for a construction manager. And then, you know, from the, from the calls, I think, you know, select three or four and interview. Mm -hmm. um, we are more than happy to be part of that process mm -hmm. for the interview mm -hmm. or, or not. I mean, it's up to mm -hmm. you on that. I mean, I, uh, um, I've been involved with, with CM interviews before and, uh, mm -hmm. and some I've known, you know, I've known some of the people, but we we're all professionals and uh, I think mm -hmm. that we could make that work as well. Um, I just think that it would, it would be a better scenario for the town uh, to, to work through, to work this as a construction management project. Um, the unknowns, like I, like we started. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and yeah. we also, yeah, because we're also because we're trying to be really flexible with the budget. Like when, if something came up that we yeah, didn't expect that, that we needed to shift funds, it's so much easier to do that with a construction manager. I mean, if, it, if there's already a, 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 a price in place, then it's just simple change orders to change things. Mm -hmm. So there's, it's, there's an easy, way of i'm sorry oh no 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 don't worry <laughs> there's an easy way of, of sort of managing that process mm -hmm. um so i i that's what i would recommend long answer to your question well i think that's what our two professionals were kind of thinking anyway so <laughs> is he yeah waiting oh there it is okay his beard's grown longer. Oh, hello. <laughs> there he is. It's there he is. Oh. Oh. You got your sound working, John? You're muted. You're too. muted, yeah. <laughs> so the answer was no. <laughs> the answer was no. Or do you, do you need to unmute him? Yeah. How's that? Now there he is. There we go. My it. apologies, everyone, but I am a Luddite. So I couldn't get my Zoom to work at home. So I busted over to my office and here I am. <laughs> well, we we've gone through most of the questions, John, in terms of things, but we were just going to I would uh, the one of the, uh, we were just talking about the delivery method. And I think uh construction management is something that we're gonna pursue. Um I was just explaining why I thought that was a better uh direction. Yeah, I strongly agree. I, I would be uh, disappointed if we did a traditional design bid process. Mm -hmm. I, I like it. He calls it like he sees it. <laughs> and we don't want to disappoint him. Right. Yeah. That's right. I told you I don't want to get on that wrecking ball. <laughs> um, great. So the last thing I have here on, on the talk about, which is pretty much the beginning of the project, is really, I'd love to hear from you what you're thinking about the uses for this building, now that we're not in an interview scenario and we mm -hmm. can actually talk more about it. Mm -hmm. um, and I can ask questions, or if you, any of you want to volunteer. Well, I, I have uh, one thought is, in the town of Monmouth, we have the trustees of Monmouth Academy, and we have the... Uh, a Monmouth Academy Alumni Association. And then the museum has a lot of artifacts from the Monmouth Academy, the original building. So if we could have one room dedicated as a library or repository for all of this information, that might qualify us for a Stephen and Tabitha King. And if we oh, said, let we want to digitalize all of this for the internet, that might, uh, you know, really make that more appealing to the Stephen and Tabitha King. So if we could get together with the trustees of Monmouth Academy and the um, you know, alumni association, see if they'd be interested in, in working on a room mm -hmm. to put all this together and with the museum. And the museum has already said, I mean, we've got in our archives, we've got all kinds of old documents from the academy. We have old records from the, uh, you know, trustees association. So those could all be put in one place, digitalized, right. and then uh, kept for future reference and research. The other thing is Tim McDonald said that, you know, the um, the old Grange Hall was designated as a place for emergency facilities for the public. 
And he said what they didn't put in there, though, was public bathrooms or showers. So if uh, if it would be possible to use like one area of the new of the old building to put in, say, like public showers that could be used in the case of an emergency, right. local so emergency, a shelter. then we right. might get some federal grants to do something like that. So you could talk to Tim McDonald, Sarah, and see if um, how we could go about writing for that grant. And you're going to want bathrooms in there anyway. So Correct. you could have, say, three bathrooms with shower stalls in them or something like that. And, and you'd only have to probably add one shower stall. To we qualify. could even do yeah. sort of like a uh, family, family bathroom, bathroom. Yeah, with right. unisex right. or something. And then have the, yeah, the, the traditional. Thing. That's yes. right. Along, <laughs> along with that, when we were doing the building reuse discussions, mm -hmm. Um, even though we may not be able to afford so that we can do more with the building initially, a uh, commercial kitchen um, for shelter, if you're going to, if there's a couple hundred people that need help to stub it in, mm. to have it designed so that can we can do fundraising yeah, to. Exactly. You know, and, and I mean, the, I think the biggest thing with the kitchen aspect mm -hmm. is to at least have it so it's something that caterer could use right. that, that you could, you know, right. bring Initially. in. Initially. You know, and, and if we have. Tea, but right, right. because, you know, it's so expensive money, to could, have industrial hoods or anything like it's that the, right. be over the top. But well, if there was some sort of. But if, if you're planning for it, then it could be, you know, raised separately, not part of this plan. <coughs> have it all stubbed in, you know, ready to, if, yeah. if we do a yeah. fundraising thing. So the commercial, so the caterers is set up for that, yeah. but it's also, it can take that next step. Right. You know, if it Where's, takes a year or two or, or five to right. raise the money to do that. that would be well, awesome. it's easy enough to start with the, com the catering kitchen component right. so, that right. if, so that you can immediately, when the doors open, use that's it That's for the whole rentals. point, right? Yeah. Yes. And I think that's what yeah. we're thinking too, is being able to, should someone want to have a small wedding oh, or absolutely. a reception of some absolutely. sort there, but also meetings can take place there. Yes. The Alumni Association, Association, we could yeah. be there and see well, our, that's, that's, our history. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's the thing is to have it functioning out of the gate. But right have it designed so it's not a major renovation and, if we and want to, right it's further right. adding equipment basically right. Right. adding the equipment right. and the, the hood right. correct I mean, and it can be done piecemeal well, what what equipment does trigger a commercial kitchen is it a range it's a range it's any yeah it'll be a range well actually it'll be anything some people think it's an open flame, but it's not. It's actually heat. So a convection oven, a range, mm -hmm. uh, obviously fryers or anything like that right. but would, right. would trigger a hood. What we could do, like a 10-foot hood could hold enough equipment, and that's probably a $30,000, $40,000 item. But Just for the hood uh, alone. When getting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, but again, those are, those are our things that could be planned for separately. Correct. But as long as the the area is designed so it can accommodate right. that when the need arises. That well, even if we good. designate the space in right. the interim, it could be work tables. Right, right. Or, absolutely. You know, or the carts come in from yeah. this caterer. <clears throat> and that way you have the flexibility and a space to work. And you could with. include in the exhaust hood that's got to go up. You don't want right. that hanging on the outside of the building. That would right. look like that. There are certain things you can do without a hood. There's some uh, we're actually looking at. Uh, project now where we're doing no hood but there's going to be cooking uh, reheating frozen things that sort of stuff so like we could do a cooler we could you know mm -hmm. or plan for those things but yeah. mm -hmm. but it sounds like in the back in the in the planning process this is about how does it uh positively affect rental or use of the building mm -hmm. right. and then how can it become even how can it grow in the right. future? That's the yeah. That was the discussion when we were doing the, the mm -hmm. reuse. I did want to right. Just jump back to the idea of the library um, because I think one of the things we could do is maybe set it up so that it was also a place where people volunteers could come in to digitize some right. of right. 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 Yeah. So it's also a volunteer area, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure you know. There's I'm sure there's. I don't know. I would hope there's people who would be interested in doing that because it is really pretty interesting because you get to look at everything. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very right. cool stuff. So, uh, and I think for our townspeople, it's important you asked, you know, like time frame. I think they need to see that things are being done. Oh, absolutely. And I think, as we say, you know, we want to be able to when when you say, okay, now open the door, they need to be able to walk in and see this th this is what we were hoping this is you know it is going to be usable space it's not just 
empty. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And I think Absolutely. that's important to the people who voted, you know, for this to pass. Do we need to at some point do a uh, a meeting that's open that I mean, I mean, I know people can attend this, but do we need to plan something after we have concepts to get input in a more? I, I think we should contact the Fair Association and ask the, the officers of the Fair Association, you know, how this could help their, you know, functions. Well, and but if I don't think we have, have to like go a, out to the general public. No. Yeah. I, I think, think by having it, that's what and this if committee have, is supposed to do. Right. Okay, right. that's fine. I'm just asking. Have drawings okay. and stuff that, yeah. as we progress, you can say, you know, or pictures. Post them yeah. right. To, yeah. We can right. post them to the Facebook opinion. page right. that we have, had started before, right. um, because you know the abutting land down there yes. where the fair yeah. takes place is you know town property as well right. and the fair doesn't own that it's owned by the town and it's overseen by the um Cumston trustees mm -hmm. which Doug and I are Cumston trustees so mm -hmm. you know we oversee that they own the buildings but we own the land right. and you know the the grand plan is to be able to have like um you know Litchfield has the blistered fingers right. you know the the bluegrass mm -hmm. festivals yeah. and to be able to have a building where events could take place but there could be music down there and you'd have an yeah, indoor right. outdoor facility to be able to to utilize that space and planning for future yeah. events um and that's where you know thinking about future landscaping not just having it a parking lot having yeah. it uh landscaped so that it flows to that other section of land. Right. And well, John and I were talking yesterday about even just having a place that someone could put up a tent. Yes, for that exactly. And have it be connected yes. to the facility or yeah. somebody sets up an outdoor kitchen while there's a- Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. And then also making sure that we've got the right parking and proper lighting yes. so it's safe for people at mm -hmm. night. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Maine, it gets dark early, <laughs> early, yeah. and early, early. Yeah. Not too often, <laughs> but- yeah. But yeah, and then looking at that and how that might connect. Oops. Sorry, yeah. ask, um, so the Stephen and Tabitha King Foundation grant process does have a deadline in October and they have a ceiling of $50,000, which I would apply for. Can we say that we would use part of it for digitizing and you know, library? Can we just say you that? you got the money for it. Yeah. 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 I think that's a great idea. I think, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I can say, I just Absolutely. wanted to. I've got extra copies of it. So I, yeah, I, I think, that's what. Um, I think that would be, I think that would be great. Because great. Great. I talked about, you know, the, the ability to, Looking for to what store things from the museum there. there. So, you know, I brought this, this was done by the museum. And I brought this up because there's a lot of pictures of the Academy of what it looked like originally. Oh, fantastic. And there's also pictures, you know, um, of, what the exterior looked like. Oh, this and is gold. Yeah, so, that's great. you know, and plus I have more pictures that Rudy had put together that I took to right. the Apple Fest that you right. gave me. And, and so these there's... are stored, the museum has these? Or... Yeah, we do. And we have like 130 years of class pictures yeah. that, I mean, this stuff could all be archived. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Actually, I just gave, I just gave him a box of stuff that Rick had in the office. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there's and Sarah, if you want to contact me, I can give you some idea of the depth of uh, historical documents that we have that need to be, you know, archived, you know, safely archived and digitalized. You could also write a narrative of sort of from an architectural standpoint of what, you know, how we we see for the facility talk about mm -hmm. accessibility and you know mm -hmm. and, and <clears throat> becomes a public community in general and a, and a resource for people um so, yeah. while we're uh, talking about the uh, availability of historic images uh, typically the way i work is to base um restoration work on historical documents so it's not conjecture so the more material that could be made available that's right. typically how i like to work we can discuss you know making modern changes um but that's usually my starting point yeah because this yeah, is uh, i'm just trying to find the yeah, one with possible future concepts or is this so, existing this was 
Uh, it's a little of both. Okay. This is what was shared as part of the RFP. Right. Um, so that's the only document we had. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we were going to, we drew it up just so we would use it as a base for our measuring. Mm -hmm. As a so, starting point. Because mm -hmm. I know a lot of those things were proposed and not existing. Okay. But we just, I, so I, we had a quick walk through and. I think the biggest conversation we had was about the elevator options right. and about whether we could reuse the lift that we have if we thought we were going to do something with the second floor that the public needed to get up there. Mm -hmm. So that was a discussion that we had yeah. with every builder pretty big to. ticket item. And yeah. to, you Probably know, exactly. Yeah. And that's a big chunk of mm -hmm. our budget. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lift that we have existing that can be reused right. or um, or what do we need to or not do to the second floor to make right. that happen? You know, one so. thing is it, you know, uh, I think it's probably still less expensive to build an elevator than it would be to have an addition, mm -hmm. not have a second floor. But I think that's probably something we should at least do a little bit of due diligence on mm -hmm. to make a one story facility where we don't have to put stairs and elevators because then yeah. we get that space back. But yeah. again, that's a, it might, we have to look at the numbers of how much it costs to add versus versus those things. But yeah. if there is there's an existing lift in the building now, there's a couple. It go, yeah, one couple of the ones that, that goes up. Yeah. Lift yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. One an individual, one person at a yeah. time. Okay, so it's not a. We have to see if that would comply, but it also depends on how much program we have on the upper floor. And like, there's not a lot of room on that upper floor. No, I mean, it, there didn't. Well, ever, that's the other. In, and if we take it back to the way it used to be, to being a couple little tiny classrooms without that hallway walking through, then, you know, there really isn't. I mean, you'd go up and you'd go into this little classroom and then up again. Right. So, well, how much value is that space exactly. versus where it cost right. to get that elevator in there to gain yeah. that? Just for that exactly. little bit of space, right. Bit of square footage. right. So we want to weigh that yeah. and, and be able to get some information and numbers mm -hmm. so that you can make decisions on right. this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and I think the only other things that I had written down that I wanted to ask you is because that building has been closed up, um, the, it wasn't like this a year ago when I was in there, but when Steve and I were in there not too long ago, the basement, mm -hmm. the dungeon, as we called it, where the teachers smoked, <laughs> is, is very damp. Right. And it has beautiful beadboard down there mm -hmm. you know wide wings going right, right. and it's covered so is should we be putting a uh a dehumidifier down there to take some of that moisture out so we stop that type of i would death, i would think you know, yeah it would be good to, to try to keep it if you could, that would be, I mean, any, anything you can do to stop, stop that, stop mold growing. And I would things. assume that there's a, a, a drain down there that we could just have a dehumidifier that's draining itself right. in there. Cause then we know there's power, but I'm sure there's a drain because of. I don't oh, really also, sorry to interrupt. We should also talk with our structural engineer about um, the extent of the surrounding demo, because it might be an opportunity to do some exterior foundation treatment um, mm -hmm. that would tend to that water problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. I don't think that it's wet down there. It just is like every other granite basement right. in the state of Maine. I mean, yeah. it's I've right. never seen water running through there. There's never been water running through there. Just but it's, it's built there. on ledge. Right. So there's a giant piece of ledge down there. Um, and then when Steve and I were in there, there's a, a leak in the roof where the B-wing, the left side on the back side, where the B-wing comes in looking towards the fairgrounds, there's a leak that was not there and roof is, you know, uh, ceiling is coming down in there. That so could be, we could look at that all water that. might be getting into the basement. Right. Yeah. Which part of the so, you know, if that, if we did a temporary or yeah. whatever, had somebody look at that, cause I know G&E had done some temporary stuff around the bell tower. So whether or not we should look at that and have something. When we do this, when we come to do the survey, we can take a closer look yeah. at it. Uh, John, before you joined, we talked about, um, we're gonna coordinate with Linda about trying to do Thursday or Friday of this week to come up. Okay, um, I'm flexible Thursday, Friday. I know uh, two of our engineers prefer Monday 
I don't know that I need to overlap with them. Um, so whatever seems to make sense. I'm, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll coordinate with Linda as well because she wasn't able to be here tonight so we can find some time, but um, but we should definitely look at that, that Chris, roof issue. What's the protocol for access to the building? Is Linda the only one with um, keys? Linda, or, Lori, or? Lori Walker has keys. Um, so I think Lori's the one that comes up and checks on it routinely just to make sure that- It's still secure. It's secure. And and um, so I know Lori does that, um, but between Linda and Lori, we should be able to get okay. whoever in there. Is well, there um, has there been a, a facilities person identified that's managed the building? That no, um, I think that Linda and Lori have been the ones managing it right okay. now. Um, so they could, if we spoke with them, they could identify active leaks. Yes, um, I I don't think they knew about this one because they they hadn't really been upstairs. I mean, yeah. you and I, Steve and I found that one when we were there a month or so, yeah, you know, two months ago. Happened. So, um, and that was a new one that I, I hadn't seen before. Yeah. So, well, my recollection was the uh, roofing was pretty deteriorated on that side, right? Yeah. yeah, and I think it's right where that B wing comes in there, that flat roof comes in. So, has that ever been tested for radon or any mitigation yeah, I done? Thinking the same thing. I the basement? Yes. I mean, if it's right on ledge, you probably you count on it. it. I'm sure. I mean, <laughs> much. again, it's like any, pretty much count on it. Yeah, any yeah. basement yeah. with granite and main. So. But, well, when you seal up this building, it oh, yeah, has become yeah. an issue. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, you know, it's it really breathes good. enough now. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. It's a picture of the facade being constructed. So I just that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> so, How long do you think your uh, survey is going to take? Is it one day, two days? It's think? probably one day on site. Uh, we may end up being be here more than one day in different capacities just because of schedules. But um, I, you know, we were thinking it was probably a half day of active measuring. I mean, we really want to record in general the building, but mostly the the hall. Mm -hmm. um, and Paul, when we uh, met yesterday, you mentioned something about documenting the buildings that are coming down. Um, what extent is the group looking for? Just photo documentation? I think just enough to identify, in, in my opinion, just enough to identify what's coming down and what's not. So somebody who gets on site doesn't tear down the wrong things. I mean, that, <laughs> that's sort of big level. Yeah. <laughs> and then we were talking also, there's some furniture that we need to just do a, a sort of overview assessment of that in the building. Um, and then we were also gonna look to the building for potential salvaging of any materials. Oh. For example, the maple floor in the gymnasium was one thing that either, uh, uh -huh. either we reuse it or it perhaps has salvage value to someone. Right. Yeah, like beams or whatever. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and the, sometimes the demolition companies are factoring the salvage costs into their fee because they're- A lot of times they yeah. do. You know, yeah. right? this, the new floor is maple though. Yeah. The new floor is maple. I believe it? it is. Yeah. So it's, it's like a linoleum. I don't think so. It looks- I only walked on once. Yeah, I know. When, Let's take a look I mean, at it. We could look and see what it is. I know that they took out the original floor, and that is somewhere getting. Jim Brandle has yeah, it. Yeah, Jim Brandle. He's going to do a fundraising. Yeah, with a scoreboard. Oh, oh, interesting. Uh, so, yeah, so John, I think I think really for us, it's just a matter of, of getting documentation together for uh, an RFP for demolition just to have a level of responsibility. Right, and then uh, we um, already have the reports. This is on sort that. of a, a, a secondary question, but I noticed that there were vinyl replacement windows and I was just wondering if anybody knows when they were installed. In the 1856 building? Okay, we'll take mm -hmm. a, a look okay. at them. Typically vinyl windows last, you know, they have a fairly short lifespan. Yeah. And if they were installed, you know, 20, 25 years ago, um, they may be approaching the end of their life. I think the windows are up for replacement. Yeah. yeah. And, and besides, the windows that are there in several places are smaller than what the original windows right. were. Yeah. So if we were 
replacing them, I think we yeah. should go back to the try to go size. back to the original yeah. size. Actually, going with a fiberglass window, we yeah. can, we can get the thinner profile and yeah. the durability. Right. Yeah. Um, it's actually I think the best solution a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I like that idea, Paul. And you can uh, match the mutton size exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. Because they can because yeah. their fiberglass is stronger, so exactly. we can get a. a a profile that would be more accurate. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, part of the problem with right. vinyl is that uh, the rate of expansion and contraction is really large, so they tend to fail yeah. pretty pretty young. Yeah. Vinyl, yes. Yeah. Whereas fiberglass and glass is very stable. Yeah. 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 Awesome. They've been there since um, 89. 89. 89. Yeah. 89. When they did the all the renovations okay. after the. Academy was built and moved across. Oh, the okay. So we're yeah. back there. Well, yeah. Well, this will all be something that we'll be looking at as part of the survey as well, yeah. just to make sure that we're we're understanding what's what. Because ultimately we will have a sort of list of things and then we'll start to put pricing on them so that we can sort of yeah. you know figure out what we can and can't do. Right. Like the the whole kitchen discussion we had, mm -hmm. right. maybe we can do the full kitchen to start. You know, yeah, don't you don't think know. so, right but now. we right. shouldn't rule it out Especially to start. Especially if you know if we want to attend to details like the windows, like right. the bell tower, yeah. mm. all of that it's stuff. Structure. So yeah. important, you know. I think the the commercial kitchen yeah. is something that can wait, but I I just hate to do a major renovation. If we're doing the renovation, right. it should be well, at least ready thinking for, about right. it so that yeah. we're planning for the in anticipation. Yeah. Right. In anticipation. Right. Right. But it should be. Yeah, it's almost like a mini master plan for the building. Right. So we exactly. understand it's functional the bigger fit it. up, but then right. how do we get you to a functioning building on the day? Right. On the day the doors are for open. For now. Right. And then how can it develop? And, and successfully right. being used. Yeah. But also, you know, we get it open and it's beautiful. And then we say, but what we'd like to do, we might get some more fun funds donated, right. you know, when people come in and are excited to see right. what absolutely. happened. Right, right. absolutely. You know. yeah. yeah. So that would set the town up well with this building and the Grange Hall for emergency. It's the Helen right. Melody Hall, dear. <laughs> Don't call it the Grange Hall. <laughs> Please, I get it rammed down my throat when I say I Grange. Have, I have a heart for Grange Hall. They're using it. Right. 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 I didn't and notice the Helen Melody. It, it's <laughs> the Helen Melody Hall. H-M-H. Yeah. Good Lord. Yeah. yeah. I told that every single time I go, <laughs> it's like, you know, transfer station dump. Well, you know. and as I always say, I dump it in transfer. Potato, potato. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it is garage. <laughs> it's it's garage. Not, it's not garage. It's garage. 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 <laughs> Just like it's Target, not Target. Sales boutique. It's the other cool one. Sales right. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, okay. Um, anything else? Then? Yeah. Any other? Well, you, th you think we'll? Uh, Proceed with demolition and RFP for demo before we do the complete RFP for the rest of the project to get that moving underway. I think we would simultaneously develop the RFP for construction managers mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. demolition. Okay. Uh, demolition will be a separate contractor. Usually by now. Okay. So well, that's kind of what I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we might want to get the the demo permit, the demo um, RFP moving. First, mm -hmm. um, just because that's a, it, it comes down to budget, right? I mean, I know some of the quotes that you had that you shared were 350, 400. So there's some big swings there. Mm -hmm. and it'd be great to be able to, to sort of get those mm -hmm. numbers. Yeah. But I, I think getting a construction manager on board would be good. Yeah, um, I was going to chime in and, and say the same thing, Paul. I think uh, when you're doing uh, removals right up against the historic building, there's going to need to be some temporary weatherproofing. And if the CM is on board, they can handle they that. Can, they can handle it exactly. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Excellent. So I think we do them both. And, those, and then during that process, we can start to think more about the building. And you know, uh, while we're coming up with the final design, we right. can be proceeding to get ready for the demo. Mm -hmm. Right. Because wintertime is a nice time to demo. Yeah. I mean, they, they, yeah, it's just, it's rough work. So, mm -hmm. you know, just, well, sorry, it's course back. work. Uh -huh. <laughs> Slash and back. Slash and back. <laughs> like, unless you get closer to the building and then you have to be. Yeah, I'm going to be. Not near the. Yeah. Then we need a buffer. No wrecking balls. No, no, Towards the other end, yes. <laughs> yeah. Winter would be a little cold for me to be on a wrecking ball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I, I hope also that during this, we can like graduate, we can take pictures of the progression of, you know, yeah. this is where we started and, and we can put those on the website. Yeah. Yeah. Just so people that aren't zooming in or people that, you know, just don't come to the meetings right. can see, well, we voted on this, what's happening. Yeah. And, right. you know, we can like say, okay. Or we could even at some point share, you know, some of the ideas or things that are going to be in the building. I'm sure people would comment uh, if it's an open forum on Facebook or whatever, mm -hmm. get some wackos probably, but oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> but it could also be, I'm sh there's probably a town mailing list of emails. Maybe, maybe that could just be sent out as questions. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it all depends on what kind of feedback mm -hmm. you feel is appropriate or that right. we need. Um, it, everything you've talked about here, I can't imagine would be objectionable to anyone. Mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody no, could find fault most, with something. Mostly but. it would be use and not use, but um, you know, how the interior will, right. will yeah. be presented. Right. You know, how historically accurate mm -hmm. people want to be versus yes. right. functional versus. Functional. Right. I mean, right. it can be functional, but it can still, have the the look the, the feel oh, the, of right. you know yeah. kind of honoring the past exactly because like, there's yeah. one piece of original slate still in the library and this picture shows how there was slate chalkboards oh, all the way around right. the library and mm. the petitions are still there and there's one piece of slate left and it's you know this corner right. but towards the road and there's one piece of original slate still on the wall we so, have some slate at the museum that might be from the yeah. Academy. If, and, um, you know, who yeah. knows? I mean, and then that's the other thing. What's underneath the right. well, industrial right. disgusting carpet, you know, yeah. and once you take down the librarian's little, you know, cubby that she had mm -hmm. and take down the suspended ceiling, what's the, yeah. that, I mean, that right. original ceiling has to be up right. there. So that might be some of the selective demo. Mm -hmm. that we get a little more precise part of the demo contract, but that we have it done up front. So that would be really important to have the construction manager on board yes. because I think we'd want them to coordinate with that. Or mm -hmm. it may be that that's part of their scope mm -hmm. and the course demolition is part of the, right. the bigger piece. Somewhere under the, as you're walking in, if you're walking in from the old office, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. above the door is a plaque that says it's the Thomas L. Fairchild Library. Somewhere under there. It's somewhere. It was <laughs> way up there. It's a little teeny tiny. Yeah. Thing. But I'd love to find it. Yeah. Let's keep it. And you know, the 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 hallway has beadboard, but it got painted over right. with this ucky thing. So we yeah, talked about the fact that polemics. Yeah. That if it's you know varnish on that beadboard, yeah. most of the time that, that stuff it's just already just pull off because yeah. it's already chipping off in places. And to be able to have, you know, because in my head I can still see a what that right. hallway looked like. The original staircase going to the second floor is gone, but because they moved all of that and right, but you've got photographs off. of it, so yes. this is all well, good. If we only had the staircase that was, you know, like oh, this, yeah. oh, Warren? Just, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. oh, and oh. in the creeks, stairs? you could never oh, see all stairs. stairs. Oh, no, 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 they were wooden. Oh, were they, and, they, but wooden? They, they were wooden, but they were just they completely out. wide, they, and they were very wide. wide. And you yeah. couldn't couldn't sneak if no. you were late for class. You couldn't sneak upstairs no. because they creep, creep, creep <laughs> up the stairs. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, the uses you've described here, I think, range from sort of you know public use, yeah. honoring the past, looking towards the future. I think it's a nice mix. Mm -hmm. And I don't see any of these that are not necessarily achievable. I think you know the we talked about the commercial kitchen and then sort of this idea of a shelter. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to do a little more research into that because it may trigger some structural issues mm -hmm. right. or some things that I don't, right. uh, which, which we should, dis which we should discuss just right. to make sure we're not. And we had a conversation about today. sprinkle, no sprinkle. And, and who, I don't know if anybody wants to be on call to babysit the building. You know, if you, you know, how many people have come in, how many, you know, are we game for getting pricing for making sure that it's I think you should protected. consider a sprinkler system. If we can yeah. do it, if there's, I assume there's enough of a service. We're going to be doing some utility work right, anyway. Right. Um, it'll increase the number of people that you can have in the building. It'll also stop us from having to separate rooms off with firewalls right. and things. Right. 
um, because it's an assembly occupancy, mm -hmm. sprinklers are a good thing. Yeah, um, I, just I, a lot of people make, trying, trying to get put out. Put the money into the building, and right. it might, it's yeah, might, might yes. protect you it. Put the sprinkler in, then you're covered for whatever you want to do. With right. It down the road. Also, will be right. more cost effective for insurance. Absolutely. And all yes. those yes. Yes. There's some ongoing. Excited if we didn't do that. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. It would be cheaper. Ret ret you know, retrofitting it for right. sprinklers. So. Right. Right. And as I. Was looking at a place, an old B and B up in Rangeley, and it's and they really did honor the past. Mm -hmm. And the sprinkler system looks like it's the old piping that they right. put in after. Like it's a all, black it's iron part so of, yeah. it's all exposed which is, piping. It's all exposed piping, and it just it just kind of fits right into that. that I think you know, I shared two, you know, twenties, tens, twenties right. building. Yeah. I think I shared at the interview the first parish church project in Freeport. We mm -hmm. did not sprinkler. Right. And we ended up having to put a two-hour rating right. on the floor exactly. underneath the hall mm -hmm. and separate out their art gallery from their mm -hmm. from the hall, which all worked. But so, it's it, so at some point I think it stuff. might have been cheaper to put in a sprinkler system. <laughs> you think? Right. But they didn't yeah. want to, and yeah. we made it work. But it right. got to be. Uh, I think we should look at it up front and make some decisions. Okay. Yeah, you can at least get pricing on it as well. Well, I think that we need to check with the fire chief about that because you know the problems with the middle, no, uh, yeah, with water, memorial school with the water. Mm -hmm. yeah, they have a huge tank there. Right. Okay. And because we're all up, up, the reservoir is right down the street here, mm -hmm. and, and there's the water pressure is minimal. Okay. But I'm on this road, and I have to have a. A, a water pump in the cellar. Oh, right. Right. Holding, yeah, holding uh, tank and, and pressure tank. tank. So we may, and that's something we can look at and find out if we need more. Mm -hmm. At least that'll be part of the system. Mm -hmm. We know we could probably put a tank in the basement somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, mm -hmm. but uh, I've done that. I hate those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, I mean, the booster pump's bad enough, but yeah. the tank is. Well, we can. But is this building large enough? I mean, obviously, it's not as big as the Memorial School to to need. It would, know. yeah. It it it's not as big a system because yeah, of the size of it. And we can also, when we do the code review for this, we can also look at what are the implications of not putting a sprinkler system yeah. in, mm -hmm. just so we again, it's getting mm -hmm. information so we can make decisions. If right. you know, do can we have the whole building unsprinklered and still have? Mm -hmm. 250 people in it right yeah. or you know whatever number the mm -hmm. the, the allowance the allowance yeah, i think is. that has to be yeah. don't they have a square foot per person there is yeah it's either formula either five seven or 15 depending on the use mm -hmm. uh 15 for like tables and chairs five for like you know um rock concert mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah or actually yeah even just music um mm -hmm. and wedding venue like yeah, yeah wedding venue would be tables and chairs, yeah. but they're going to look at it. It's going to be the occupancy is going to be based on the sort of highest use, the, the, the the most dense use. In, in yeah. some ways. But um, but we can research all that. We just haven't done any of that yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Um, good to know. Great. Um, it's sort of. Sarah, you, do you have any questions or what, what you're yeah. thinking? I do have a question. I'm I'm really into grant writing. <laughs> That's yeah, I'm I wanted to ask you about the really, deadline. For I'm really narrow focused. So um, this I need to get a consensus from you. The deadlines. There's one in October, October fifteenth, and there's another in April, April fifteenth. I believe that the more detailed and specific we can be with regard to use of the facility, with mm -hmm. a nod to the history of it, I think the better the application, the more likely we will be approved. You're not supposed to send an application in like in October and then again in April. So right. do quality mm -hmm. rather than just rush. So I just want as much information as you can throw at me. <laughs> you know, I just really, I want to know if that's acceptable for me to do the uh, application for April 15th mm -hmm. to give it the time. Oh, yeah. oh, I, I agree. I, I agree. Yeah. There's, no, yeah, reason there's no time between yeah. now and the exactly. 15th. Because exactly. we can also produce documents you know, and even here. renderings yeah. of what it might look like. Yeah. That, right. could, that I mean, could help the application. Yeah. The more it shows help. you've been thinking yeah. about it. Right? Exactly. Right. My yeah. experience is that if you can prove and show that you've done your homework, you're much more likely to get yeah. an award. Yeah, I yeah, agree. Right. And now, you know, and there's no rush to put the money anywhere right now because right. right now we really haven't spent any. And even if we're done the project and money comes in, we can still apply it to the loan balance. So 
yeah. since we're not going through the bond bank, we right. can, we're going right. through, you know, regular banks. And, and Sarah, if you want to contact me at some point, we can go to the archives at Cumston Hall and I will show you everything we've got. And it's, it's quite impressive. Uh, so you can kind of go through it and get some ideas so you can write up a really good grant. Okay, can I have your email, please? please? <coughs> I'm sorry, what'd you say? Might I please your, have your email? Email. Larry Bugia, L-A-R-R-Y, B as in boy, U-G-G-I-A, at yahoo.com. Thank you. It's um, Larry, B-U-G-G-A. I-A. I-A, okay, yeah. I wanna yeah. be sure. Thank you. Just one, I don't want to disappoint and I wanna do the best job I possibly can. I want $50,000. <laughs> 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 as, as do we. Your, your passion is obvious. Yeah. It's great. <laughs> All right. Fantastic. Well, this is great. I appreciate the, the time and kicking things off and, and having this discussion. Like I said, now we will, we'll, according to Linda, we'll get some survey work done. And then um, I guess we could plan to meet again in two weeks, two weeks. if you want. Or I'm going to, and mm -hmm. all the, my only hesitation is just uh, how much time and I want to make sure we have enough information for it. We've got a few meetings going on because of Maybe the fact should. that. We should look at uh, November 2nd. Oh, that's, uh, election, that's election day. day. That's no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't do that. And you, Tuesdays, you prefer. Um, I think that Sarah's bad for Wednesdays, right? Sarah, Wednesday and Monday. Is it Monday, Wednesday? Monday, Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. You can try for the 26th. I just. Um, well, the not, is the 9th better for you or is that too long? The 9th would. I, the 9th uh, is great, actually. What's okay. the 9th for you? Ninth is okay for me. Okay, let's, why don't we go for the ninth? And what we can do is, is maybe share things via email. Um, if, if November 9th is wide open. So mm -hmm. the list. How about you, Sarah? November 9th? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It'll be six, 6 p.m. Again. Yeah. Okay, great. Here. And the email that Linda sent to this group, does mm -hmm. that include everyone mm -hmm. in terms of yeah. correspondence? Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if someone is omitted from that, just let me know and I can yeah. have them as or we can have them. I just want to say I am thrilled that um, you have accepted this. <laughs> How can I not accept? No, but that you came and you presented such a passionate uh, display of, of what you felt that you could do for us. And that, for me, was very, very important. And I am so looking forward to working with you on this. Well, that's... Again, you, now you've started and ended being very kind and making my day. <laughs> but this is a... We don't, you know... John and I were talking about this projects. We don't want to go after projects that we're not, we don't want to do. Right. And this is, uh, when we saw this one, we were very excited about it and, and was sincere. So, uh, yeah, you were. And it came across. <laughs> and just so you know. And yeah. the thing I liked is you brought the young, young kids. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm trying to teach them. <laughs> you don't get anywhere if you're not mentored in life. And I right. had a dentist that did that for me. And because you grew up in Lewiston, I mean, you know this yeah. area. And being a Mainer, sorry, Steve. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, won't let it be a Mainer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 moved into my backyard. Oh, well, well, I got thirty-five. So, not quite there yet. Um, so you know, but when you're a Mainer and you kind of get yeah. what's in our head about this stuff and why it means so much to us and why we want to, you know, make it great again. And yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it, well, it's pride in your community. Exactly. I mean, it's like I, I I still have pride in Lewiston as well, which is a, it's a hard one for some people right yes. now. Yeah. But uh, you know, when, some of the buildings there are just yes. exactly the old and they are, before yeah. they unreal. change the old the old Pex building. Oh, oh God, yes. Know. That's where you oh, saw Santa Claus. The I know on the Santa fifth floor has. with the big pool with the toys. Yes, and you with the fish. fish and you could ride the escalator. You it could. was a big and they had that fake tree outside the elevator on the fourth floor I think yeah and the money would go up in the tubes I always wondered just, with I was sitting there going I know, I know. I know. Yeah, the canal system is amazing. Is, yes. The well, canal system know, is an engineering feat. It yeah. really yeah. is. Right. And I, I was working at CMP at the time when they drained the canals and some of the stuff 
Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. fat ugh, bikes, bicycles. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. So, uh, that was so, not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. It was only maybe 15. Well, yeah. Because my. He's 23. So yeah, it's 23 my, years my ago. My stepfather worked for the Department of Public Works. Yeah. And I think yeah. he was. Just he was talking about something. Yeah, we always talked about, laughed about the the little yellow building that overhung Pine Grove Tavern yeah. that over <laughs> across the street from the Empire. Right. <laughs> You'd come out of the Empire at night and oh. be going, the Holly, the Pine Grove Tavern. Yeah, I'm getting in my car and driving back to Monmouth right now. Be jolly, so, at the jolly at the Holly. Jolly at the Holly. Truman Hollis. Right. Uh, you know, they, but those are the good old days. And when you grow up around here and you look at that stuff and you just laugh about it and go, you know, how much better could it get? You know, and uh, it, the connection, I think, is, as managers yeah, for all of that is, yeah. is important to us. So. Well, and, and thank you for, uh, well, you didn't have really a choice. We brought our, our brought the, the youngsters as yeah. my interns, but I, I had people who did the same for yes. me. Yeah. Who you know who were mentors in my life, and I hope to pass it forward as best I yeah, can. Yeah, exactly. Um, so they're all excited to work on the project yeah, too. When it, very, after we got it, yeah. I sent a text, and they're all like, "Whoa, yay!" Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good thing. Um, okay. But uh, we look forward to working on the project. John and I are excited about working together on this yeah, one. Absolutely. I think it's going to be exciting to see what we end up with, yeah. and we'll have some tough decisions. You've got a real jewel of a building, so yeah. the the bones are there. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and I do have one final uh, question. Um, when I come up um, Tuesday, or rather Thursday, Friday, or Monday, uh, could you make available some of the historic resources you have, the uh, images? I don't know where I would go to look at. I mean, I can leave this book. I don't, I'm sure there's probably more, but I can also take those pictures because there's some really nice mm -hmm. ones well and i just gave larry a box of old yearbooks and things like that from um, rick amro but yeah i don't know if maybe larry yeah. might be available that day to take him into the mostly what it's yeah. Yeah. i think bobby bowler has a wonderful yeah. collection of uh, old think, photographs so i could ask bobby to and email gonna, those to your firm yeah. yeah if he has them digitally that would be great yeah that would be the and if we need to see them in person we can even schedule another uh, time yeah. Like yeah. A trip Digital yeah. images would what, actually be email? my preference. Uh, we're here, which is probably out on there, and then I'll uh, I'll have Bobby email you everything she's Oh, that'd got. be great. Because yeah. I am those that Rudy, I think, right. laminated yep. for the alumni association yep. that I I used. Plus, this book has you just have to kind of search through it to find the pictures, but oh, it kind of goes good. through everything, and it also I think there's pictures that show how those additions were put on, yeah. just kind of put up right against right. the brick. I mean, well, they're were. just right yeah. there. Against it, well, yeah. that's my guess. It's cinder blocks. <laughs> yeah, no, all of that is, is great. And the coffee joint. I mean, we'll see exactly. it, it's always nice. Exactly. If, 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 well, if, that, if I was gonna say. <laughs> and one of the funny things that Mr. Are. Carlton, or Bruce Stedman, Bruce Stedman was my science and math teacher in junior high, and he, posted something on Facebook to Mr. Carlton, who was my junior high history teacher, about how when they tried to drill a hole to run a line, a phone line or something for a computer, mm -hmm. and they thought it was just a single layer of brick, oh, no. found out that it was three Brilliant. layers triple, of the triple, triple, yeah. triple, yeah. triple yeah. brick yeah. and how long and how many bits they went through right. trying to. So there's a, you know, they drilled a hole from like Mr. Grover's office into the science lab, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just, but funny things yeah. like that. And, and, and Harry Cochran, who designed Cumston Hall, also is who designed the facade on this building. So, you know, we, and, and, all of that stuff is somewhere in in right. around. But okay. well, that'll be good. Uh, got me to move to adjourn. Yes. <laughs> move we adjourn. I'll second. We'll roll call. Okay, we'll roll. do a roll call. And Sarah. Roll call. We'll start with Sarah. Yes. Dr. Booth. Yes. Yes. C. Dawn. Yes. <laughs> Lord, 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 Lord. Lord. I almost said I, like that. I always want to. It's just one of those. There are two Linda like Giffords. I know, Please don't I call me that. that. Lori, was, yes. It's the L issue. Please. I know. Yes. <laughs> For a journal. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Have a good night, Sarah. Bye, Sarah. Bye. Bye. I've already emailed you, Dr. Bougie. I can't oh, wait. <laughs>
Okay. Yes! Okay. You open Pandora's box right there. <laughs>